Welcome to Motorman and Rude Dog. I am Rude Dog, and of course, Scott Morgan joins me as Motorman. What's going on, Scott? How are you? Welcome back. Oh, Grant, glad to be back, Rude Dog. I'm going to tell you here in old the eye of the epicenter here in Florida. 15,300 cases were reported yesterday. Not getting me close home to Mama up in Michigan, but I'm doing all right. Otherwise, since I have my own little uh, domain here in the man cave of Coral Springs. Well, you're living, you're, you're living in the bubble. Of course, the bubble's not going to burst unless your name happens to be on this short list of MLB players who seem to be dropping off like flies. And not necessarily because of COVID testing. It's because of they're afraid of don't want to have families. I had Dan Vietti of CBS Sports uh, Major League Baseball just last week. We were talking about the big names that are dropping out of the Major League Baseball season. And it's kind of interesting to note this, that a lot of players are still willing to opt out regardless. And I can't right. say that I, and I can't say that I blame them necessarily for obviously many, many reasons. But when you look at the, the, the current situation, it just, it's getting uglier by the day. And players are continually dropping off like flies. And it just kind of makes you wonder, if there isn't enough players, what do you do? Do you go after replacements? Do you cancel the season? What is Major League Baseball going to do? Well, right now, let's talk about a couple uh, big-name players. Um, I know Mike Trout's on the fence. David Price has already opted out. So you got that 60-man roster uh, to work with. So I guess does the strong or the brave survive, really? I mean – Who's going to end up? We already know what the season's going to like. Like anyhow, it's going to be a mirror of what it is. We all talked about the sprint versus marathon, so you just have to go to that sixty-player pool, so to speak, like you would say during the NBA, you know, the Olympic Games. When you're talking about pro basketball, you have a lot of potential people. Then we'll find out which ones actually survive. Is really what you've got. I talk to Don Manningly all the time uh, with the Marlins on our daily calls. And the questions that we have, Rudy, when it comes to baseball are not your typical baseball related questions. Well, we got to deal with soft tissue, get tested every other day. And if somebody goes down, you know, blah, 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 who's going to be out for 14 days or whatever the quarantine protocols are. So, yeah, you're right. I mean, the more uh, the numbers are certainly not helping any sports case, much less MLB, because you have more touching of the ball and a lot of the different idiosyncrasies that you have within baseball per se. So yeah, it's yeah, yeah, it's definitely a touchy situation for sure. Well, it, it's a touch and go because you have a lot of players, and you mentioned Mike Trout, you mentioned David Price, and a lot of guys are basically opting out because again, these guys have families to to contend right. with they have families to think of and other people who are around them I, I can't fathom even remotely considering if I was a baseball player major league baseball player and I thought to myself you know what this is what I need to do this is something that I have to do well if you don't have families or kids then that's one thing if you do this is completely something different you have to really recognize that and put that over over money every single day because people are dying from this this isn't just your standard run of the mill well i have the flu cough cough sniz sniz this is people are dying every single day from this and and, and i and i would hate to think that someone's going to put themselves in the way and in the line of fire no pun intended when they're out there in the outfield accepting a ball from someone who maybe it chipped off their their head heaven forbid get nailed just like we've seen in tanaka about a week ago uh, which seems to be just a mild concussion for him. He seems to be coming back and willing to play really, really soon. But uh, it, it, just put yourself in, in in harm's way. I mean, we look at we look at Zimmerman, thirty five years old. I don't know how much more he has left in the tank. He's been with the Nationals since so five. It just kind of makes you wonder. You know, is, is this something that's really designated? Uh, does he need to play? Does he have to play? If I was Sam, I probably wouldn't want to play. He doesn't really need to prove anything to anyone other than the fact that he uses common sense for himself and for his family to say, you know what, it is what it is. I think I'm just going to sit this one out. What you have to understand, though, when you're talking about MLB versus the NFL, you got more guaranteed contracts, a lot more longevity. You know, where don't tell that to an NFL player. They're playing year to year on these basically one-year contracts. So, yeah, Ryan Zimmerman, the guy that you're talking, probably has a few more choices do I do it or do I don't? 
and, and you're only talking 60 game season compared to 162. So that how much money are you really going to lose uh, when you base it on a number of games? Where the NFL, these guys have to play. You don't know what's going to happen here. Well, what, think about the average span of an NFL career between what two and a half to five years, unless you're an exceptional. Where an MLB tenure is far greater than that. You know, those are very uh, different circumstances. But I understand where you're coming from. Well, I mean, when when you look at sixty games, including the the playoff situation, what is that going to look like? Sixty games prevents all kinds of things from injuries, additional. Uh, any type of other anomalies otherwise would come up in a very longer stretch of season. Let's, let, let's think about the NBA for a second. Their, their games are over 100 plus. So it just makes you wonder, is the break a viable one? Will we see less injuries? Will players report less problems, less issues? And will, be, and will there be less cases of COVID showing up within these major sports organizations? I'm going to probably say yes. Why? Because in a 60-game stretch, including including the playoffs, which is the most truncated baseball season I think I've probably ever heard of or ever seen in my lifetime. I know you can say that for yourself as well, being in this for over 40 years. But I, I, I look at this as being a very unique situation. Could this be taken advantage of in the best way? Because Manfred worked it out with Clark to say, you know what, this is where we're at. How do we do this? Are there, is there going to be incentive money? Are we paying them half for 60 games? There was a lot of work that had gone into creating a new contract uh, for, this, for this Major League Baseball season. Now, as far as the Marlins are concerned, you mentioned Don, Don Mattingly. Mm-hmm. Where do the Marlins sit? I mean, you're talking about how they're having meetings every single day and they're talking about COVID and, and how, to, how to prevent it. Do you believe that, that the commissioner is making constant calls to, to clubs and players and, and organizations as whole and in, in entire units to say, you know what, this is where we're at. This is what we need to do. I wish you guys the best. Stay safe. You know, if you have any questions, contact your local, you know, MLB PA rep and so on and so forth. How is he handling this? Well, you know, Rob Manfred's definitely involved and concerned about the welfare of all of his teams for sure. So there's no question about it. There's a guy that could have re- canceled the whole year but it would have looked bad for MLB because of the surface situation about millionaires versus billionaires not playing while everybody's trying to do it so what Rob Manfred and Tony Clark did is they saved face okay to make sure there was a baseball season to worry about the labor thing in 2021 that was a of course, you know he's in communication with them make sure yeah, everybody wants to know what the test updates are they really do and the way Don Manningly told me last week was a lot of his players came in in better shape during that 90 day hiatus. And don't think that with all these clubs here, you know, the players work out on their own, you know, we call it self motivation, right? Mm-hmm. That, you know, if you come in in better, better shape, then what are the probabilities are for injury? Well, they definitely decrease for sure. So, you know, again, baseball, you know, you, you've got players out there that are in groups you know, left field, right field, doing whatever they're doing. You can't have more than five or 10, 15 people at a time doing certain things in terms of fundamentals and things like that, you know, what they're doing in the weight room. So there's so many different things that are involved in this whole process. Now, I got to tell you one thing the Marlins have going, and I'm sure a lot of clubs do it, but think about the Marlins. They play over at Marlins Park in downtown Miami, but their spring training is out in Jupiter, Florida, so they can shuttle players back and forth up down I-95 so that they're all working out playing simulated games to keep them fresh. Now, Don said, I don't know what other clubs are doing, but the Tampa Bay Rays can do them for Charlotte. And, of course, the Arizona Diamondbacks, they go to Salt River Fields, and they do the same thing. So what, what are they left to do when you have 60? Maybe you have 30 at a time, one place, go to your local college and do it that way. You know, so it, it depends on the different things that you have in terms of how you group these people up and it comes going back into shape. Oh yeah. Well, MLB is proactive on that. Well, what's, what's really interesting. And I just thought of something strange maybe they can actually promote this and put this, and put the wheels into motion in relation to saying, this is, this is the protocol six feet apart, right? So we're, we're maintaining the social distancing standard and no two players can be anywhere close to being six feet apart, six feet or greater. And I think greater is probably going to be better. But my question is whether or not there's going to be video associated with recording these guys to ensure 
culpability on uh, on the organization's part to say, you know what, they're practicing social distancing. Here's a video showing them working out six feet or greater apart. Do you think that this could help curve and maybe prevent more players who otherwise would have been tested for, for COVID come back negative? I'm not sure about that. I mean, video is what it is. I mean, the only time, think about when you're on the baseball diamond, the only time that at first base that the runner and first baseman get close to each other is during a play. But you've got six feet apart throughout the diamond. You know, you got from first to second and all that. Now, well, the what first baseman doing... going to be off the bag? I mean, is the first baseman going to be six feet off the bag? I mean, how do you, is the base runner going to be six feet off the bag? How are they going to handle that? Well, there's some things you can't handle. <laughs> you can't change Abner. Then bring back Abner Doubleday to figure out COVID-19. Because that's the, that wasn't the way this game was created with COVID-19 out there. Yes, you see the number 19 jersey, but not COVID-19. Abner Doubleday, where are you when we need you? <laughs> I don't Abner. know. We're going to see. I, yeah. I, I would like to see something really, really solid and really found, uh, foundationally uh, – taken into account for all this social distancing and all you know everything that's being talked about in relation to that i think we're going to see that i don't know how they're going to handle that second base runner uh to start off uh this the what is it the sixth inning or the ninth inning or something to that effect and yeah so, and extra innings yeah, i gotta so, tell you i gotta tell you i did ask don manningly a question that a few of my other guys on other broadcasts and we'll see if you can get this one right okay is there a perfect game uh, in the extra innings when you put that man on second base? No, absolutely not. No. In his eyes, he said, yes, it wasn't the pitcher's fault to begin with. <laughs> well, your first line of defense is your pitcher. So <laughs> that's – Well, I knew was, you were going to get that. Hey, listen, I had, to, be I, I had to stew over that for a couple of weeks, and that's when I hit – and, then, you know, if you would have saw the look on Don Manningly's face, when I ask him that question, you want to talk about the ultimate curveball from a reporter to a manager. That was that. And Don said, you know, that's a great question. And then he said, I say it yes. I said, you know what? As far as I'm concerned, okay, that works for me because I don't even think there's anybody else more qualified to give me that answer outside of the manager, other Marlins, let alone the fact that Don Manningly was a pretty good player in his own right for the New York Yankees. He was yeah. a heck of a player. He yeah. really was. Yeah, not like I'm was. talking about some guy that, you know, was a halfway decent player. Manningly posted some good numbers. So he's he obviously seen the base pass a lot. For he does, but that, but, 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 but that really needs to pay off when you're talking about a shortened season for the Miami Marlins who have failed to get into any postseason contention in, it seems like, forever. I mean, they, they have won one, but it's been – No, they've actually won two, Rudy. Like you think about the incredible history of this organization, okay, and all the losing years, how many teams can say that they've won two World Series and that existent, let alone over a period of time? Yeah, okay, the Miami Marlins are accustomed to fire sales, a la Wayne Huizenga, Jeffrey, uh, Luria. Get that, okay. But let's not kid ourselves, all right, for a moment that the uh, <laughs> Marlins have two world championships. Laugh at them otherwise, but they still have it. But when I threw that at Manning, you got, you know, I guarantee after this broadcast, you're going to think about this with your baseball entire. Is it or a perfect game intact with a man on second? Because I had to deal with this with Stuart Hack, David Levin, and then I nailed the skip with this one. This there, one there's really absolutely no about. way. You know, no, this, is, this is a very uh, educational season and very truncated when you have 60 plus games including the playoffs i you know i, I don't know I, I don't know how it's going to look i don't know what it's going to look like but baseball's back and i think everybody's really happy about that speaking of baseball what? being back um Ed, educational is a big uh is a mildly understating the obvious just thought i'd get that in there go ahead yeah you could throw that in there everybody needs to follow us that take no punches this is rudy reyes Right. Well, joined by Scott Morgan Roth at Take No Punches. Like it, love it, share it, never leave it, and never put it underneath the cooler side of the pillow. Speaking of pillows, speaking, speaking of shortening things, the NFL is talking about uh, shortening preseason by two games. To be quite honest with you, the way that I see it is you cancel preseason altogether. You cancel the Hall of Fame game in Canton. You're, can right. you're, you're, you're canceling the ability to induct players into the Pro Football Hall of Fame. 
I think that when you look at the shortened season and we're having only two games in association with, with preseason, if you're going to cut off two games, you may have just cut off three games and right. maybe even four games and just call it a day. Uh, what do you think about the shortening by two games, basically, Did for you, preseason? Well, let me tell you, growing up as a kid, this is where the age thing comes in over you, pal, okay? As they used to have six preseason games and 14 games. Uh, can you imagine this, Rudy? Six preseason games? I think in this case, you do uh, under the COVID-19, you have to just get rid of them all. You, you, you don't have any choice. It, that's inevitable. What, what, what are you going to do? I, we, may be, we may not have a season. I'm wondering how the media credentials are going to work out for me with the Dolphins and the Jacksonville Jaguars. They even thought that far, but I still have to think about it because aren't undoubtedly that's one of my biggest things I got to deal with going into the fall, if there indeed there is one. Yeah, oh, no preseason games. Yeah, I, I would say I would say zero preseason games. Make sure that everybody is on the same page. Start off with with game one of your regular season. Uh, but again, making this really interesting is that you're going to have a lot of virtual workouts. No one's working together right now. You have so much separation. You know, you have two degrees of separation between you know players who have been there, done that, or who have been in the system. Uh, I, I, as I stated earlier, I, I had Veron Haynes from a running back for the Steelers. He was on my show yesterday on the RudeDogShow.com. You guys can listen to that over an hour's worth of conversation with him. Um, but more, more importantly, it, it, it was about just if, if your player, you get drafted, what happens? Well, you go into conversational modes. Um, you do virtual workouts. What is this going to look like? What, it's, what is it supposed to look like? We don't even know. Right now, there are guys that are working out on, on two days who are not veterans. Veterans probably will be, who have been in this game for five years or, or more will have the ability uh, to maybe not have as much workout routines as you would maybe expect them to see in a regular training camp situation, a regular environment inside of. Right. Uh, and in this case, the, the, the UPMC uh, – workout area that was just built uh last year for the Steelers and now no one's going to be in it so I, I'd like to see how that's going to work out will they maintain social distancing within that center will they be using that center that remains to be seen uh because right. and and what and what's interesting is that I've heard of more players for Major League Baseball dropping out and opting out than I have for football players and you would probably, you know, when you look at when you look at the numbers, monetarily, these major league baseball players, uh, as we heard from Patrick Mahomes, who received a record, you know, a record deal, a baseball kind of deal. I think it was a baseball kind of deal, even though he was uh, uh, prone to play in in the major leagues along with his, uh, as his dad had done back in back in the heyday. Of, mm -hmm. uh, of baseball and he was a pretty good player for for all intents and purposes but w if Patrick Mahomes is able to play under these kind of numbers maybe players who are opting out of major league baseball only receiving a certain portion whereas NFL players are only wishing they receive major league baseball contracts right uh, and and I think that's the reason why you haven't seen people drop out you may see players drop out but right now the NFL PA and the NFL haven't decided how they're going to handle wearing masks on the sidelines. I heard from one person, no. I heard from one person, maybe. I heard from one person, you have to wear one no matter what. So I, I don't know how they're going to handle this, th this protocol, but safety over money. And if you don't get safety involved in that process, you're not going to have an NFL season. It's not going to well, exist. They don't know how. I mean, right now, as we're getting down to crunch time, what are we looking at? July 13th, right? So they don't know. They're, they're looking at the numbers right now. Every league is looking at the numbers. What about college football? You saw a trend last week that took place where now non uh, Big Ten, Pac-12 are eliminating non-conference games, and that may be the first domino to drop in. Ivy League was the one that started it, and all of a sudden, bingo, you got a few more dominoes in the process of dropping. They don't know if they're going to wear a mask. How do you go ahead and wear a mask underneath a helmet when it's hard to breathe out there when you're talking about men that are between 250 to 350 pounds out there you know you talk about breathing respiratory problems things like that so again they'll figure it out and they and you know what Rudy they don't have a lot of time to figure it out even if you get rid of preseason games all right you still have what six weeks before a the opening of the regular season you know that's not a lot of time 
you but know, you're not going to have you're going to have almost no no time at all, and that's where these players need to be ready and commit to their own regimen. Look, the, the 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 bottom line is this: if I was a professional athlete, and I'm not, I don't even get paid as a professional athlete by any stretch of the imagination. But if right. I was one, I would be sure to incorporate all these workout routines. Uh, I, I had Mike Daniels on free agent defensive tackle he's played a little bit of in the, the interior as, as far as an inside linebacker position um, but he's been working out he's been maintaining himself physically uh, cardiovascularly he's been doing everything humanly possible in order to remain ready so when he gets that call from an NFL team who could use that depth who could use that experience I mm-hmm. mean he, he, he was an absolute beast playing for the Packers he played one season not even a full season for the Detroit Lions after you right. end up on, on on IR, of course, that's your neck of the woods. But um, right. it, these guys have to remain ready, have to retain a level of, of readiness. Do you think Major League Baseball guys are ready to go? I mean, a little warm-up here, a little warm-up there. Do you think they're ready to, to start this 60-game season and maybe even not see as many injuries as you would because of the truncated season versus a full-blown season? As a matter of fact, I, I do. And the more I sit in on these calls every single day, the more it's advanced that the managers are policing this thing. They're getting good information from every aspect of their organization, what to do. You can't, nobody's going to sit here and say that when you're looking at these protocols, you're studying for an exam at college. They've got to know everything. They're testing it every other day. Every, so you know who's got it and who doesn't. And you know full well, anytime you're dealing with sports leagues, you're going to have advanced testing and advanced numbers and technology to get you the information. It's like, not like the average individual out here. We've got to wait a week to find out if we've uh, been uh, diagnosed with it or not. No, not, not, not when you're talking about organizations that are worth billions of dollars, making sure their biggest assets, so to speak, are protected. Yeah, I, they're ready. They'll be ready. And I think that as time goes on, again, that's why you have these expanded rosters. Again, you're talking a pool of 60 players that you can shuttle back and forth, move. You know, I was asking Don Manningly another question yesterday that if he thought that relief pitchers could go about two or three innings versus a normal put one in, uh, one for an inning and an inning and an inning. He said, oh, yeah, yeah, especially with the universal designated hitter. The thing you have to understand, Rudy, is when you look at all the different um, rule changes that are being implemented for 2020, the universal designated hitter, sure. If you got a relief pitcher that can go two or three innings, he's on a roll. You may be looking at maybe two pitchers a game, three pitchers a game instead of going through five or six. So if you understand what I'm talking about in terms of all the rules and the strategy, you won't see many double switches anymore because everything. But he's playing under these same rules. Many years ago, you used to have American League umpires, National League umpires. Oh, let's put them up, up under one roof. Well, that's what we're doing with the rules. So, you know, there's just a lot of different things. But, oh, I think MLB is definitely ready. The question is, is if these numbers continue to spike. Here's another little sidebar here. What about the Toronto Blue Jays? They're actually approaching their AAA affiliate out in Buffalo, the Buffalo Bisons, about playing over in Buffalo, which is about 45 minutes to an hour away from Toronto, because of international travel. And I had been predicting this the last few weeks. I thought the Buffalo Bisons – uh, could end up hosting the Toronto Blue Jays. So there's so many different variables, Rudy, there really is about how this thing is. But to answer your initial question, yeah, they'll be ready. Now, the only thing that could stop it is if uh, the cases within MLB get out of control, then the season gets halt, halted, and then you don't have any choice. And, and, and that's not anybody's fault, MLB or the, uh, or the players. It's just circumstances being what they are it's well, not a public relations gap at that point. sure right right and it's not going to be a, a it should not be considered a public relation nightmare for any major league baseball team it's not even one for the organization why because they had made the determination that there are safety protocols in place uh and if unless they follow them then they're going to find themselves on that short list and the short list right. is you know, it's not one, two, three strikes are out. You're just out autonomously. And then there's no there's if, if, ands, or buts about it by any, by any means whatsoever. So we're going to see what happens there. Speaking of, speaking of name calling, hopefully it doesn't happen if this uh, baseball season decides to get canceled altogether due to spikes, and hopefully that doesn't happen, is this Washington Redskins situation 
uh, it's kind of out of control right now. There's been a ton of a ton of conversations about changing their names. I'm going to have former cornerback uh, Fred Fred Smoot uh, of the Washington Redskins on on my show on the Rude Dog Show coming up Saturday, uh, and we're going to certainly d- just dig deep. We're going to probably dig to China uh, on this on this topic. But there's been a lot of conversation about Red Wolves, and I said I said Renegades, and that number's not on the list. Uh, that name's not on the list. By the by. Um, what's, what's going on? FedEx pull out under armors, pulling out. What are they going to do? Are they selling this? You know, what's going on is that this name Redskin has been referred to, uh, the Indian, the native American community for, for quite some time. I just found out recently that my grandfather may be Choctaw and Choctaw Indians, uh, were the ones that they modeled uh, the, the name Redskin after. And so I thought that was kind of interesting. I don't find it offensive, but I'm so, you know, I'm not exactly first year removed from being a native American by any means. I'm, you know, I'm kind of whitewashed, so to speak, but (laughs) when you're talking about the name Redskins, what's, what's going on? What do they do? And what kind of nicknames do you have that you could put out there that maybe they would be interested in changing their name to? Well, I mean, Washington Warriors has been talked about. Dan Snyder, Dan Snyder actually trademarked that name, hoping to get an arena uh, football league there, so that one would be in play. Washington Red Tails is one that I've heard being mentioned. Uh, Washington Federals, you know, would certainly be appropriate, or the Senators, which used to be a former Major League Baseball team. I don't see that one. Washington Skins, if you wanted to talk about pigskins, but I'm not so sure about that one. And I know Washington Monuments would be symptomatic for what the area is. I don't see that one. So and I can see Red Tails and Warriors being the two leading ones of this group. I, I really do. And, and now let me go over some other uh, names in the past, okay, for which Indian names are related. You obviously know about the Washington Redskins, right? Mm-hmm. But then the Atlanta Braves are said they're not changing theirs. Cleveland Indians are considering – Uh, doing theirs and then Chicago Blackhawks uh, has said they're not going to change theirs and how about the St. John's Redmen many years ago before they ended up changing it to the Red Storm so when you talk about the word red incorporated in there Daniel Snyder is going to want to make sure that he gets a name where he doesn't have to change his color scheme and keep a lot of the identity of the franchise color wise so when you look at a lot of the different symbolic options do you go with the easy one where you got Washington Warriors because of an arena football league you were going to do? You're looking for a quick uh, trademark is what you're looking for, uh, t- for a name that you considered as a second or third possibility. And now there's no better time to implement it than I think right now. Well, so. I, I, I think so as well. And, and when it comes to the Braves changing their names, they're definitely uh, on the clock for that one, uh, and, and they need to also figure out what they're going to do as far as their Oh, but they exchange. said they're not going to do it, though. They said they're adamant against doing it, and the, uh, and the Chicago Blackhawks are adamant against not doing it. No, I know the Cleveland maybe, Indians are kicking the tires about doing it, but maybe, not the Braves. You know, I, I think the Blackhawks are maybe the less obtrusive. If I was the PR guy, if I was the up-in-arms person, individual in relation to – you know, you have to do a name change. It's got to be done. Well, it doesn't necessarily have to be done. What needs to be done is, is recognize and 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 let's be let's be perfectly clear on this. Is if it is offensive and is brought up to you that that name, the Blackhawks, has been is offensive, which is clearly not the case, then you're going to have to change that name. Being the Redskins, there were issues before. You had Native Americans who were up in arms right. in regards to that name, but yet nothing was done about it. Dan Snyder just kind of you know, uh, stuck away. I mean, heck, the only thing he's going to have left for, for sponsors is Snyder Hanover, you know, the honey right. mustard pretzels. And that's the only sponsor he's going to have left unless the name change is going to happen. Of course, that's expected today, in fact, via, via PR storm. Now, listen to some of these names that have been kind of vetoed only because they've been registered for, for a, a, a trademark. Washington Red Wolves, scratch that one. I know Fred Smith was looking at that. Tribe, Red Tails, Monuments, Veterans, Renegade Gridiron Football. Now, not just the Ooh. Renegades. Of course, that was one that I picked because I think that one seems to work out relatively well. You don't call it Gridiron Football. It's just the Washington Renegades and call it a day. 
And you can't change the name to Washington Braves professional football team because clearly there's a baseball team also right. under fire for changing their name. Uh, whether or not they do is a whole other story. That's, that, that's up to them, clearly. Red Tails, Freedom Fighters, uh, Warhogs, Radskins. Like, yeah, Radskins? Come on, man. Yeah, that's I'm not that's sure hilarious. That red, red-tailed hawks and Potomacs or Potomax. Depends on what side of the river you're from. Um, <laughs> yeah, I was waiting but, for that. Uh, right. But, but th- th- this, was, this was launched by Raymond Lucci, ultimately, out of Santa Rosa, California. Uh, this, these are all service marks, and he has an identification number, uh, serial numbers on all of these. And fairly enough, if you really want to, you want to add some, some, some fire to this, to this brimstone, he did this on the 4th of July. Wow. So why he would go about this on the 4th of July is another story. I can't explain it. I don't understand it. But well, what, I, <laughs> well, what I can't understand is, number one, Dan Snyder is under pressure not only to do it, but he wants to put a – he wants to build a new stadium on the site of RFK that uh, stadium, which I've actually been there and uh, it will be demolished soon. And so, yeah, he wants to get a name team actually back in the DC area. And that's the site that they've identified RFK stadium. And we all know full well that Dan Snyder being hit in the pocket. There was no threat of the pocketbook situation. Okay. But now indeed, okay. He has no choice, but to make it as you just alluded to before. Well, we're going we're gonna to find out what that actual name is today, and I guarantee you that they've been brainstorming uh, since, since this firestorm has actually transpired, since it happened, since now there are things taken into consideration that are just absolutely nuts and insane. Uh, we're going to switch over here a little bit, only because well, been- we're going to figure out a name one way or another. Well, he's been working with Ron Rivera closely on that name. So he actually, when he brought on Ron Rivera, I think Ron Rivera is going to do a good job. But Ron Rivera and Snyder have probably been talking around around the clock 24-7. So he couldn't have brought in a better coach, Rudy, to have with him, especially, you know, hopefully to turn the franchise around, but turn the image around as well. Well, the image is 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 really part of of everything of every you know Coca Cola, your Pepsi's, you know, image is absolutely everything. Not to suggest that that none of these players in this sponsorship game nowadays have made errors along the way because they have, and it wouldn't right. be a fair assessment to say that none of them have ever came up with a formula that didn't quite work out very well. Coca Cola did it with the old new Coke ad, which didn't seem to quite work out. The taste wasn't the same and. They decided, you know, why mess with something that's been working for well over 100 years? And at that point, they said, well, we're going to abolish the whole thing. That was a PR nightmare. The Redskins could be finding themselves in that situation unless they change their name and find something relative that fans could really get a hold of. And they're talking about a nickname. So, in other words, a nickname is not a replacement for an actual name. A nickname is just um, like – Rude Dog or Motorman. Yeah, that's not our real names. It's just a nickname. So a nickname. Right. What's what's a nickname? <laughs> a nickname should be should, should be utilized uh, for. It's almost like it's almost like a pet name. And you don't the football team doesn't deserve a pet name. They deserve a real name change. Well, I do have a question I want to ask you, and I and this has come up a lot of times. I realize that ever since a Black Lives Matter has hit us a few weeks ago. I know there's been so many things about changing the history. Do you think that there's still a lot of overreaction to maybe certain name changes and taking monuments over? I mean, I, I think that this, I understand the black lives matter thing is very important. Don't get me wrong. But when you're talking about changing everything on the planet after so many years, why did it take us that long to wake up and not do these things ahead of time until you have crisis management setting in with the most recent events and over the last several weeks? Because I think Charles Barkley has gone on record saying this whole thing is calling it a circus now. And to some extent, I really do agree with Charles Barkley that there is a degree of a circus involved in terms of the reaction that we've had to deal with universally. Well, there's, there's really a lot, a lot of changes and a lot of those social changes have, have kind of volcanoed onto Pompeii. And we happen to be Pompeii. Right. You know, and, and those changes within, within our landscape are really up to us to discern as to whether or not they truly unequivocally are insultative, that they are rude, they're suggestive, or anything else disseminating any type of 
any, 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 any type of class. And when you're talking about changing the Aunt Jemima's image off of a bottle, I think that's a little much. Um, I, you know, I, I just don't, I, I just don't believe that. Um, and I understand the whole black lives. Movement. I get it. I completely understand it. Like I said, I'm right. a color. So I get the whole movement thing. But if, if you stay away from, from the Hispanic culture, let's just say that, you know, let, let, let's look at labeling for, for Mexican Americans, right? So you have the, the Tapo Tia guy, you know, right? So you have him wearing a sombrero. What are you going to do? Change that and put some type of chihuahua on it? I mean, it, it just, some of this makes perfect sense and other parts of it makes no sense. And when you start talking about destroying monuments, Abraham Lincoln's monument being, being right. painted on and, and being mishandled and being vandalized, he's the one that tried to help abolish slavery. And why would right. you, why would you even think about doing anything? It doesn't make any sense to me. So hopefully that answers your, your, your question. Um, well, yeah, it does. I mean, yeah, I'm with you all the way. Why would you, ab- you know, is what, to me, history is what it is. You, you know, you can't change history. You will say that if July 4th, 1776, and when we declared our independence, oh, well, let's just change the date. It don't make any difference, even though, and I'm just using that as a way to describe what I'm saying. History is what it is. Are you going to try to do what you can to revise history and try to make it a little bit different based on the, yeah, but no, you did answer my question. You can't change everything on the planet based on this. You, it's your goal to improve it, okay, because the right. events, the timelines are what they are. There's right, no but, 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 but you have to learn from history. You have to understand right. history. You have to recognize that a lot of African-American people were put on their knees and waterboarded because they wanted to make a stand. They wanted to make a statement. They didn't do what police officers wanted them to do. You had Rosa Parks, uh, Martin Luther King, all of these individuals, great individuals, great minds, uh, uh, really stood for something, and they made it a point to make sure that the – regardless of whatever humiliation that they were facing in their lifetime uh, ultimately was for something and not for nothing. And by not changing something means they fought for nothing, which is not the case. So uh, speaking of, speaking of nothing, I'm going to switch over here. Major League Baseball, we're going to go back to MLB for a second, only because they're canceling the all-star game, which I think is probably the right move to be quite honest with you. Only, only for the simple reason that you have thousands and thousands of fans, uh, you know, elbow to elbow, body to body, uh, and it wouldn't be fair to open it up for some and not all, for all those who decide to get tickets. I think it's the right move by Major League Baseball. I think, I think uh, you put a, a feather in the hat of Manfred in, in regards to this situation and canceling the All-Star game because of that reason. Well, I mean, the game was headed to Dodger Stadium. Manfred's already said 2022 is going back to Dodger Stadium. They've already put a lot of work into the building to bring it up to uh, 2020 standards. So, yeah, it's the right move. I mean, Major League Baseball, outside of that, you know, a PR debacle about who's going to get on. They've had, they've had, things have smoothed over quietly, the focus on baseball. It was definitely the right call. How do you determine an All-Star game after 60 games? Yeah, oh, the NFL got 16 games, have an All-Star game. He can't do that in 2020. No way. I mean, think about the numbers there. How many 400 hitters are we going to have in 2020? I mean, you know, uh, but that will have no bearings on Ted Williams. But so who's an all-star in 2020 after 60 games? We're going to be – you're probably not going to have one. They're not going to exactly. be point. one. You're, you're, you're going to have all these guys unless you have someone throwing smoke on the mound every single game and he plays for one clubhouse and it's just not going to happen i just don't see that as an actual reality setting in uh, but this is rudy reyes with scott morgan roth scott thanks man a pleasure having you on make sure everybody gives us a follow i take no punches that's a pretty good insight and uh and, and some okay. significant likes on youtube as yeah, well. and also please please follow me on twitter at tribune south rudy always great to be back on with you and always enjoy doing this every opportunity we get hopefully every week so we can continue to build a following we do everything our, our power to make sure that you have the energy and the information which we call our strong prolific one-two punch so looking forward to the next uh opportunity to motorman and rude dog sounds good thanks scott take care thank you everybody for for tuning in and we will definitely be up next week with another fantastic episode of 
Motorman and Root Dog at Take No Punches. Like it, love it, share it, never leave it. Never leave home without it either while you're at it. Or wherever <laughs> home is, unless you're limited to a two or three places. But it is what it is. Unless oh, you okay. live in a bubble. That's it. <laughs> or, a, or a man cave. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good to me there too. Thank you for tuning in. We'll talk soon. Take care, guys. <laughs>